The best way to describe the Sony 50mm f1.2 G Master lens is that it's easily the sharpest lens that I own. How sharp, you might ask? Well, it's laser sharp. Let's get into it. Hey guys, Paul Phillips here, Pathek Photography and Gear Reviews. Welcome to the channel if you're new and welcome back and thank you uh, if you've visited before. Today we're looking at the awesome Sony 50mm f1.2 lens. I've owned this lens since uh, January this year, so about six months. So my review is going to be based on my actual experience with this lens thus far. I know, that'll be refreshing, right? <laughs> okay, before we go any further, um, I just want to mention that the video is sponsored by D Backdrop, and I'll put a link in the description for you. I asked them to make a couple of custom 5x7 backdrops for me, and they gave me a small discount on my last purchase. But I was so impressed with their ability to reproduce the colors I requested, I wanted to spread the word to you guys in case any of you are in need of quality backdrops. So these guys can customize just about anything, send them a JPEG, and away you go. You're all set. Two weeks later is what it took for my backdrops to arrive. So my rationale for the purchase of Sony lens is to have one laser sharp lens that I can use for headshots or full body shots and not to have to be miles away from my subject. Prior to owning the 50 mil G Master, I own the 50 uh, FE 1.8, which most people know is not the sharpest lens ever produced. And as such, I never really used it that much. Maybe because I got it when I was shooting APS-C, I don't know. But now with this new 1.2 aperture lens, holy cow. This lens will change your life if you're primarily shooting people like I do, but it's also nothing to scoff about uh, if you're shooting video. So if you're a hybrid shooter, you're not going to regret purchasing this lens, let me tell you. Like you might imagine, I bought this lens because of the 1.2 aperture, uh, but ended up getting a whole lot more than what I bargained for. The focusing speed of this lens for photos is incredible. You don't have to wait for it. Uh, you, you really, it's, it's hard to keep up with the lenses so fast. <laughs> it really is. And that's what I think surprised me the most. I simply do not have to wait for this lens. So big thumbs up to Sony on that point for sure. One of the first tests I did with this lens was to shoot some pot liquors ducking in out of a cardboard schoolhouse. That's a three-year-olds for those of you that haven't heard that term before. Take a look at one of them that decided to play GQ boy. Look at the sharpness in the eyes. That's what you're paying for with this lens. The sharpness combined with its focusing speed and light weight make this lens an absolute joy to use. I would say conservatively that your hit rate between great images and so-so images will definitely increase uh, using this lens. Mine certainly has. When I decided to buy this lens, I was also considering the Sony 135 f1.8, but considering my studio is limited to about 20 feet end to end, uh, it just didn't make sense uh, to, to go for the 135 unless you need the longer reach if you're shooting sports uh, or something like that, which I don't do very much of. So let's jump in and we'll do a quick unboxing on this lens and go from there. So the G Master lens is no different than any other lens. It comes in a well-packed box. Uh, mine arrived, no issues, you know, so that's a good thing. And it comes with a nice little carry case, a little strap here. You can throw it over your shoulder you want. I can guarantee you I'll never use this unless I sell it. So, and then last but not least, it comes with some instructions that I have not opened and will probably never look at them unless I sell the lens. And that brings us to the lens itself. What a beast this thing is. I, I cannot tell you how much I love this lens. As you would expect being a G Master, it's weather sealed. It has on the one side, you've got a declickable aperture ring here. So when it's on, you can hear the clicks. When you turn it off, it's not. So if you're doing push pull for video, that's going to be much appreciated for sure. So I'll turn that back. 
on the top and the side of the lens. So if you're shooting landscape or portrait, you've got two programmable buttons. Um, I use mine most often to punch in or hold focus. You can punch in from 50 to 75 millimeters uh, digitally. And then on the side, you also have an AF MF switch here. Um, if you're shooting video and you want to switch to a manual focus, you have that option. The lens hood is probably one of the best lens hoods that I have on any lens. I have a real disaster lens hood on my Viltrox uh, 85 millimeter 1.8, just terrible to use. This thing is so nice. It's got a nice clicky button here. You press it in, you turn it, the thing comes off, put it back on, turn it. You get that nice satisfying click so that you know that the lens cap is in place. And then you've got this nice heavy duty rubber ring on the bottom here. And that's so that if you set your camera down like so, you know that it's not gonna slide across the table and fall off onto the floor or something like that. So it just gives you that extra measure of security. And all in all, uh, from the quality of images that I'm getting out of this lens so far, I have no regrets about making the purchase um, whatsoever. Go out and buy this thing with confidence. Okay, so if you want to use the 50 mil for video, uh, what you're looking at right now is F1.2 at one eight thousandths of a second. ISO is about 800. And the reason you'll hear people talking about the uh, 50 mil being a cinematic lens, uh, not everybody likes the 50 mil focal length, but it's been a Hollywood favorite for years. And I'll show you why. Because it has that ability to really isolate the background and bring you in tight to whatever scene that you're shooting. So if you've got sitting someone sitting next to you and you're like, uh, you know, hey, sweetheart, you're going to have to spill the beans if you want me to break your husband out of jail. Uh, so my Bogart impression notwithstanding, I think you get the idea. OK, same shot, only now we're at f1.4. So I want to show you the difference between 1, 2, 1, 4 for video. And then, of course, we'll do 1, 8 just for the heck of it. Okay, so now we're back to f1.2 and all three apertures I shot them at one eight thousandths of a second. It's a really bright day. I'm under the gazebo and on the back deck of my house and I've got the GoPro off to the left. And the rig that I'm using is pretty straightforward. It's Sony a7 III. I'm shooting in standard. There's there's no color grading. There's a BMW uh, UV filter on the end of the lens. But other than that, uh, pretty straightforward. And the audio is going through my Rode wireless go to system. So what you see is what you get. Okay guys, so I thought what we would do is, because outside the sun was going in and out behind the clouds, the colors were all over the place, but you know, the whole idea was to kind of explain the whole cinematic uh, effect that you would get from this lens or, you know, the focal length being very cinematic. That's what people say about it. And I happen to agree with it. I mean, it's a great focal length when you want to draw people into the conversation. So indoors, what you're looking at is we're at F1.2 right now. And I mean, the bocaliciousness of this lens is just, <laughs> It's absolutely amazing. And if you like it for video, you're going to love it for photos. We're going to, we're going to look at some photos next. So this is F1.2. So this is F1.4. And lastly, we've got F1.8. So you can see the three variations in the bokeh in the background. So now let me show you what this lens can do for photos, because this is where you're really going to be blown away. So Tavi is a model I've worked with two or three times in the past. Look at the sharpness in these eyes. Unfreaking believable. One thing I can say about the Sony 50 millimeter F1.2 G Master is that if you're going to shoot women, headshots of women or what have you, you better understand frequency separation for sure. <laughs> because this lens will show you every, you know, hair and peach fuzz and skin pour that, you know, it's just unbelievable. But uh, the, the quality, the sharpness is just unbeatable. So here's my first example of razor thin depth of field. So right now uh, we're at 30% and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to zoom into 100%. I'm going to bring this down. Notice how the right eye is out of focus and the left eye is in sharp focus. This is what you're paying for with f1.2. So let's just go back out. And if I hadn't told you that the right eye was out of focus, you might not have noticed. So this is what we call a creative decision, right? You have to decide if this is what you're going for. But look at the bokeh in the background here. Friggin' awesome. So this is example number two. And I took this shot last night just out for a walk with the missus. Um, there's a trestle bridge in Kawartha Lakes close to where I live. But if you look at this image here, look at how shallow the depth of field is. 
I mean, you know, from right about here back is out of focus, and that's f1.2. So if you can excuse the hideousness of my ugly mug, um, really, you know, you can draw a circle and see exactly <laughs> what's in focus. And if it wasn't for my nose sticking out there so far, I would say, you know, I would guess the depth of field to probably be three quarters of an inch, something like that in, in an image like this. But um, it really shows what the lens will do. So here's another image shot with the G Master at f2.8. And my God, look at the pores in the skin here. You know, the little eye drop over here. And this is just a shot of one of my favorite pot liquors. And this is another example of just how freaking sharp uh, the 50 millimeter f1.2 G Master lens really is. So here's a Joel Grimes style image, um, basically zoomed out and if I zoom in here, let me just bring this down for you. Apologies again for the ugly mug, but uh, if this doesn't drive home for you how sharp this lens is, uh, I don't know what will. So to wrap up this video, I think it's pretty fair to say that this is uh, Sony's fastest lens to date. Um, it's definitely their sharpest lens. I mean, somebody might argue the 135 might be a little bit sharper, um, but from what I've seen, this lens is just, you know, absolutely laser sharp. And hopefully I showed you enough examples of that in this video. So if any of the, th the things that I've showed you in the video resonate with you, you're sitting on the fence about purchasing this lens and you can afford it, by all means, go out and purchase it. You won't be disappointed. The more I use it, the more I love the lens. And, uh, you know, as far as the G Master line goes, it's just so convenient to be able to hit the button and punch in from 50 to 75 or from 24 to 35, etc. Um, a lot of great advantages with this lens and I can't think of too many cons other than it's a heavy lens and I wouldn't want to be vlogging with it. <laughs> Holy! But, you know, the fast glass, you know, comes with a cost and the cost is a little bit of weight, but, you know, Sony's done a great job of keeping the weight down on this lens. It's small size. Um, so if you found this video useful, do me a favor, hit the subscribe and like buttons and notification bell, and I'll have some more great content for you in the not too distant future. Uh, probably a video on a7 IV, as a matter of fact, I'll be upgrading in, in the near future. So thanks again for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one.